and then she was and then she was like, see, like when I was growing up here, there were no Chinese kids or whatever. Oh blah, blah, blah. My but now God. there are like three or whatever. She's like, Australia's changing. Oh like, what my the God. God. You're just standing up. Oh, yeah. Hello and welcome along to the Community Notice Board. Oh, I am ready. Yeah? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> sounded very confident. I am. Are you still on OxyContin? <laughs> nah, it's gone. But I now, I actually do have <laughs> a, <laughs> I moved on to heroin. Though. That's I how most people a, respond to I, it. I do <laughs> have a different prescription now. I've got a, a very um, powerful anti-inflammatory because I've been getting headaches. <laughs> Oh, uh, it doesn't sound as fun as oxy. <laughs> <It's not laughs> yeah. I'm getting high off but this the, fucking neurofin. But then when the I go went to the pharmacy and the guy was like, "Oh man, this is a very powerful painkiller." I was like, "Gimme, gimme, gimme." <laughs> what is it? A Mobic or what do you take it? Uh, oh fuck, I don't know the name. But I think I think it's like essentially like a more powerful like Voltaren pill for like okay. swelling in my head. The guy. Coke <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on us? Yeah, maybe. I've been telling. I've. Because, you know, a couple of headaches from the head injury, and then I just keep telling Amy, I was like, there's only one explanation, bleeding into my brain. <laughs> <laughs> there's no other explanation. So I just got to keep taking fucking Nurofen like Skittles until it goes away. Is that your yeah. plan? No, I have. If it's not better in two weeks, I have to go get a scan on my head. Damn. Which is, Damn. But it'll, it'll be better in two weeks until I run into another metal fence and then make it worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll find the piece of Lego you stuck in your ear four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> scan. All right, oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Hello. Welcome to another episode of Community Notice Board, a podcast about suburbs we grew up in, local landmarks, hometown heroes, and coming-of-age tales. we got a very special guest today, very funny comedian, Triple J presenter, Michael Hing is here. How are Ooh, you, Michael? Hello, everybody. Um, How are you doing, man? Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks so much for having thanks me on your podcast. In. No worries, man. And today, we're, we're going back to the Shire, baby. Hell yeah. We love the Shire. <laughs> just in time, just long enough since we've been around this area. Who well, was the last uh, comic ooh, you had on from the Shire? That's a good question. Does Emma Zamet count no, as the Shire? Yeah, no, she, but she was Sydney. very adamant that oh, her, no, she was yeah, in she the was, Illawarra region. No, yeah, not yeah. Illawarra. She went to school in the Shire, but she in the St. George area. Yeah, yeah, right. okay, yeah, she's yeah. across yeah. the bridge. Yeah. Across okay. the bridge. So I guess Rosie Piper did Engadine. Engadine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we haven't okay. repped the Shire too much, Actually, I don't yeah, think. I guess not. For such a place with such rich history. <laughs> <laughs> such a great and place and in culture. Yum, yum, yum. So what, the, the particular suburb, Illawong? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Little sleepy, sleepy little suburb. suburb. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty, it's it's kind of one of those places that uh, where there's very little public transport there um, because mm-hmm. there's fuck all there. Um, <laughs> when I was growing up, it was like, Almost, it wasn't like, it was like a couple of hobby farms and shit out there. Okay. Now there's like apartments and stuff. So it's yeah. like, just, yep. you know, it's part of Sydney and stuff. But um, yeah, pretty sleepy, pretty yeah. sleepy. It's like on a peninsula between two rivers and so, which I think is, I think the word Illawong means like two rivers in like the local language or whatever. Right. But um, it just means that like there's, 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 there's one way in, one way out basically. And, um, you know, for bushfire season, you can really fuck yourself by going <laughs> the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> So hot, so people would just have like from the city would move down there and buy a little farm and try to grow. Yeah, or like or it was like because there was like an agricultural school there, so there was like oh. a little bit of like roadside strawberry kind of shit going on oh, or whatever, oh, you know, so or don't like mind that couple of little, um, couple of little like horses and stuff. Like it was there was yeah, probably yeah. like f- maybe three or four little farms when when I was growing up, and then there was like also a um, like I don't know if you call it a farm, but like a. F- like an animal freak show kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> like a guy. With some strawberries on two headed holes. we are going to start moving a, into a cow with a beard. <laughs> no, 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 like a, yeah. a goat driving a nail into its nose. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. A real fat bear. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was I'd my first job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <sure>. <laughs> <laughs> they pay me in honey. I love it. <laughs> Jamie, you need to shave a bit for it, actually. <laughs> no one believes. And they, and they put me on a diet and workout plan <laughs> for it. <laughs> no, they, no, like a dude who just like a like you know like in the, the outskirts of the city sometimes there'll just be a dude who owns a bunch of weird fucking animals. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and like and like for a budget fucking ex- excursion, the kids can go there. You know? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't, I have no idea who this guy was. Know nothing about him. But like I remember like maybe twice in primary school, once for primary school and once for like a local um. 
like school aged but not school specific um uh you know kind of vibe we went there to uh yeah to like look at a parrot and a lizard and a whatever else wow. yeah. so it was like a zoo but just without yeah, like, a, like a fucked zoo, like a zoo <laughs> but not not nothing not none of the good like stuff the reject was shop he, of the zoo, yeah. Yeah. was he like one of those guys who in the local area will be like if you see a snake call this bloke or see if you see a possum he'll come pull it <laughs> out of your roof think, and i think he might have been like an animal handler who went around to schools maybe or okay. something right. yeah. yeah i think Yep. But um, mm. yeah, what? Yeah, he was just a dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe he's one of those guys who like yeah has animals on like TV and stuff. You know, if you need to have a parrot in a show, you need it. Yeah. Some guy, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so it'd be yeah, a weird, yeah. eclectic bunch yeah. of animals or something like Star that. Star now for animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I wonder yeah. at what point you become that, though, you know? Because, like, at first you're just like, man, I'm just a guy with four lizards. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get the fifth one, and you're, and you're like, now I'm a guy with a dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy can set a ticket price. You yeah, know? yeah, that's, that's right. It's like, uh, yeah, what like, uh, what animal are you like, okay, now we're in the fucking money. Yeah. I've, got a, I've got a parrot. I've got a, I've got a possum that's been run over that I'm taking care of. <laughs> My you better believe it. You better believe I have six lizards. Yeah. What, when your wife leaves, <laughs> when you get, you know, she's like, I've had enough of the, all the lizards and the possum. Yeah, well, it helps you pay alimony at that point, <laughs> yeah. I guess. I, I think I brought it up here before, but like, I remember going to my uncle. Like, my uncle's throwing this big New Year's Eve party, and then he had to pick something up for it, like a, a spit to cook lamb or something. Mm. And I was off this dude, just a suburban house in his suburb down on the south coast, and he was the guy who was like, if you see a snake, call fucking Roy, and he'll come around. We went to his house and it's just wall to wall like ter- 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 terrarium, terrariums, terrariums, fucking sp- and just snakes yeah. and fucking lizards. And, like I was terrified. I was like ten years old and there's just huge fucking snakes everywhere. I don't know what it's like. Like what was what was like back in the day, but nowadays I think you got to have like a, a license and shit, yeah, right? Sure. Like it's pretty regular. <laughs> I don't think this guy yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you find something, let me keep it in my living room. Yeah, and that's uh, a scare the fuck out of me. There's a lot of those kids. kind of people in the shy though, because it's like it's a little bit. Um, Outdoorsy, a little like there's a lot, like there's bush, there's a lot of bushland and stuff mm. through it, and then like I think every neighborhood in the shire just had like a couple of like animal freaks who you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah, oh, just Man, collecting that's uh, a, dangerous animals. That's the dream, yeah. I know, like where I grew up in the hills, there was a, the koala park, which I think is like pretty famous it, within New South Wales mm. as being like a big koala enclosure. But when you go there, it's literally just like a fucking park where there's a couple of pens, and they're like, "We'll go in there then." <laughs> and then they just touch one, yeah, you know, really? like there are a couple of kangaroos here. Is it caged off? Uh, not really. Like it, it's like a large swath of bushland with like a few like low fences that you can go in. But like, man, when, you know, cause when we moved from England, like if people came and visit us, they're mm. just like, well, what do you want to do today? And everyone would be like, well, I want to see a kangaroo. And you'd yeah. be like, well, I know just the place. It's a 15 minute drive <laughs> instead of going all the way um, to the zoo. This koala park, did you also work at this place? Or? <laughs> 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 just going down Jamie's yeah. resume. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they had to give me chlamydia for it. <laughs> but it, it was worth it for that sweet eucalypt. <laughs> <laughs> So you, are you saying all the eucalyptus I can eat? <laughs> that's why. That's Do you why know my, me, dude? Yeah, that's why my nostrils are so clear, baby. <laughs> Ravaged by chlamydia, oh, but I can breathe like a demon. <laughs> oh man! So pretty sleepy growing up there. Did you go to school? Or? Yeah, I went to school. Yeah, yeah, I went to school, bro. <laughs> Don't worry, around, man. You, had, you, had, uh, you, educated, you educated hingers? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I went to Illawong Public School, which is like the local public school there. Um, it was one of those schools that, like, because Illawong. Uh, I guess when I was there, it was like a boot, like a boom time for like young families there, right? And I think before and after my generation, people were like old people, you know, whatever were living there. So it wasn't like you know. But when I was there, the Ilong Public School, there were so many kids there. They had to have like all those fucking trimmed like dim animal classrooms, right? Yeah, yeah. Where it's yeah. just like ah, this won't last. We'll just <laughs> throw up a couple of shipping containers, put the kids yeah. in there. Yeah. We're like sort of factory, the factory theater. Theater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing in a crisis? Yeah. Too many idiot comedians, too many shows, too many young families, yeah. shipping containers. You know? Yeah, yeah. So We're all like up on cinder that. blocks, you know, like yeah, the stolen yeah, yeah. car sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. But I remember once at school, um, like, obviously when you're a kid, you don't fucking know that. you just like, oh, room's a room or whatever. Yeah. The day I saw one of those things get fucking craned in, I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Like, this is this is all made up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all my life's a lie. Yeah. It's like a video game is adding on little... It's just level. coming over from a fucking truck. What? Oh. <laughs> you know? We had, yeah. a, in primary school, um, we had a bunch of demountables. And then I was thinking the other day, because we had a, like a playground t- type of thing, you know, monkey bars, whatever, the classics. And then we just had a circle of... <laughs> 
various there were like various sized tires. <laughs> So we had like a big tractor tire was the big was the main event like because it was huge, and then there were like smaller <laughs> down to like car tires and that's what we played on jumping from were one side to the other pushing kids in, in the ground or just loose on the ground loose but they were too heavy to like pick <laughs> up. I, I, I think the car <laughs> tires are probably nailed in this. <laughs> it just sounds like a dump yard. It, it was man. the depression there. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of mufflers, you know. The kid got the muffler, man. That was the lunchtime. One of the classes was a burnt out uh, Hyundai Civic on <laughs> brakes. <laughs> No tires. We're playing with those bad yeah. boys. The, uh, the dogs used to chase us through the school, so they gave us a string of sausages. Dickensian novel crew. That's Queanbeyan public man. <laughs> oh, that's great though. Oh uh, man. <laughs> and so, so Illawong Public School, Primary School, and then yep. High School. I believe you said Caringbar. Caringbar High, High School. school right? Yeah, yeah. And the joke, and uh, I guess trigger warning for this, but the joke. <laughs> you know, I don't know when you guys were in high school, but did like the different schools used to send around like memes and jokes about the other schools and stuff in the area, like lists. I don't know. No, no? I mean, how would they send it? I, like you, email and shit, I guess. Oh, like or like ICQ. Really? When M- I was in high yeah, school. MSN and yeah, ICQ. Yeah, there was, there was like, definitely rumors and there was like, like oh, not like rumors, but like jokes. Like yeah. I, I guess like there were jokes about other schools and like everyone who goes to this school is like X or Y. Like, Stereotype yeah, yeah. yeah. Our the school girls, stereotype, yeah. yeah, our school stereotype was like depressed and suicidal. Oh, right. Because <laughs> there was like a bunch of kids who necked themselves oh, like in the years right. later. And so we're like, oh, is this like a funny joke? Or is it like, you know, we're just laughing about some kids who like, you know. A serious thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, oh. mental health. How cool. No, yeah. Shy of fucking, yeah, real sensitive about that stuff. <laughs> well, every, like a lot of people come on the pod and say that their school or another school is like, the girls are slutty over there. Like that's oh, the very like sure. oh, common one. That, yeah, I've not yeah, heard so. suicidal. Yeah, 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 that's that's like before. suicidal virgins, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, although when you venture to the North Shore, everyone's like, yeah, school, sk- sex scandal after sex scandal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, Kang Bar, just, it was like a selective school. So like everyone's, like a maladjusted nerd, deeply uncool, and we were across the road from Endeavour Sports High School. So literally, they had on one side of the road had nerd school, and on the other like jock school. <laughs> oh, oh, man. This and is a teen comedy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we would get like I remember getting on the like bus with like like dudes who would like go on to play for the Sharks or whatever, like yeah. like NRL kids mm, and yeah. stuff, and like you know like state fucking triathletes or whatever the fuck. And they were just like so much hotter and cooler than us. And we're yeah. sitting there just being like, oh, I like Magic the Gathering. PlayStation 2 is coming yeah. out. Yeah. Mikey <laughs> Calendar. <laughs> Want to play Tekken Tag Tournament, anybody? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I, do, I do have a fairly um, uh, controversial or, you know, infamous alumni of oh, yeah. Illawong, of, sorry, of Caring Bar High. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jamie Gow. I don't know, think I know who Jamie Gow so is. So just to catch everyone up, I'm sure you will uh, eventually. He's basically this, um, you know, young, very intelligent kid, like I said, selective mm. school. He yeah. seemed very, very smart. He went there, he graduated, went to business school at uh, UTS. Um, but the whole time he was harboring the secret fantasy that he wanted to be like a, a gangster. Oh. He loved the life. He would take photos of himself with like the ciggies. He was mm-hmm. getting like, you know, oh, no. to be honest, like every tats. kid and every yeah. boy, yeah. anyone who's 17 any, wasn't any, a gangster, you yeah. know. Yeah. Anyone who wants good of fellas. yourself having a cigarette, you're doing it lean back. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, all his friends said it was kind of, it was a bit weird and mm. they were a bit scared. And he did have some friends who were serving time in uh, jail for drug related charges. Yeah. Uh, and then he eventually, he met uh, this bloke, Glenn McNamara, when he was working as a PI. Um, McNamara was a solicitor for one of Gao's friends who was up on a drug charge and Gao was being the Cantonese interpreter. Um, so he starts talking to Glenn McNamara, this PI, um, who's an ex-cop, just been divorced, just big divorce guy energy oh, uh, coming no. off this guy. And he's like, I want to do a big drug deal. I'm going to make you rich. You're going to be able to live out your gangster fantasies. Uh, and he, and McNamara, was, he's an older guy, right? He was in the cross in the 80s where it was all corrupt. And so it, definitely a um like a fucking scummy dude. Oh, yeah, 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 totally. Right, okay. <laughs> Complete, every other person would like hated him because he afterwards came out and wrote a bunch of books. Didn't sell well, any of them. But all the books were him. That's why everyone was mad at him. Like, <laughs> yeah. wrote, fucking write his a sentence. Like, tell publishes. a story. <laughs> um, but every book was about how everyone was corrupt in King's Cross in the 80s except him. All right. Like he was like, I was a golden child, tra- right. just yeah, trying to do my best, yeah. and everyone's like, "Can't you were worse than all of us?" <laughs> yeah, that's right. definitely the you know the old stand up joke format where it's like, "Hey, if you think you're the, not oh, this thing, yeah. it's that's you." Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't know this guy. It's you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they meet up at, at pubs down um, that one particular pub, I think, down in Hurstville a lot, and they start planning this drug deal. 
Uh, and eventually they go, the plan is they're going to meet at this storage shed in Padstow. Um, so oh. there's CCTV footage. I think you might be clocking on. Yeah, 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 yeah. CCTV, this might be also, by the way, the most like most recorded murder of all. Like <laughs> there are so much CCTV footage. Yeah, wow, you, could, really? you could stitch it together and not miss a fucking second of this guy's Jeez. day. Um, so yeah, CCTV footage catches them two going in. And then pretty soon uh, an old old mate with one of the most distinctive walks you've ever seen have you seen roger the dodger walk recently no i've seen like clips of this cctv but what he, does he walk like? he ambles in like it's like the penguin like but <laughs> even more exaggerated yeah. like it's side he wobbles side to side um and he just comes in afterwards three people enter two people leave um he's reported missing the cops immediately start like looking for cctv cctv footage and then they like cannot believe their luck because they've like mm, they're just like oh well we've got the murder on tape yeah. exactly yeah um and so they start putting this sting on mcnamara this is bizarre a few days after the murder the police seize his car from his um the garage at his apartment building he doesn't even notice the car's gone for days the, the cops like tow it out of there he's left three kilos of ice that he stole as a kid <laughs> in, in in the car like <laughs> 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 Oh my god um, So But you think an ex-cop Wouldn't be so Shit at crime Totally like, That sounds well, ridiculous that, that, Cause yeah. immediately Him and Roger Start going at each other And they, and he and He's like No Roger The Dodger uh, and by, yeah, This is Roger, Roger Rogerson yeah, By the way Fam Famous mm. corrupt cop Yeah we yeah. covered him in, in the King's Cross episode um, But they were like He was like Roger Rogerson Threatened to kill my daughters If I didn't go along Roger Rogerson's excuse was I was I, I showed up uh, to the storage shed because I wanted to give him a bit of fatherly advice because I was worried he was getting into drugs. <laughs> 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 and then there was like a, a struggle or whatever. Uh, but yeah, they killed this poor kid and they um, they got rid of his body mm. in uh, Cronulla. It came straight back to the surface. They found um, uh, they, they found it a couple of days later. Some fishermen found it. And yeah, like that's the reason that they finally got Dodger in, in jail. <gasps> and they kind of think there was all this speculation that they just went to rob him. And that seems mm. pretty likely. They took the yeah, drugs, yeah, they yeah. robbed the kid, right? Mm -hmm. But then there was this footage because um, Jamie Gow pulled up to Glenn McNamara's place, got out of his car, got into Glenn's. They went to the storage shed. Uh, and then hours later, something like eight hours later, there were these two guys who came, got uh, Jamie's car and drove it off. And they were uh, Chinese nationals. The next day, they hop oh. a plane to Hong Kong. Mm. And everyone's like, what the fuck's going on there? And then uh, only two years ago, like this is six years after the crime, this theory comes out that um, Jamie Gow had basically been seen at the Australian Crime Commission. And they were like, oh, no, the triads think he's a fucking rat. And it was a hit put out. Oh, and, oh no. Because, like, why would you he steal three kilos him. of ice from, like, the mafia? Yeah. Yeah, they're going to kill you, right? Fucking Fuck hell. me. Yeah. So Jeez. that's uh, – and he went to he went to Karen Bahar. Man, let me tell you, that's a that's a real outlier of a story. I mean, <laughs> 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 like, obviously, it's a tragic story and whatever yeah, else, yeah. but uh, that's not – that wasn't my experience <laughs> of going to the uh, – yeah, a bunch of fucking nerds and virgins like me. I watched this um like one hour, you know, like with Aussie crime stories documentary about that when I was doing research for this pod, and I loved it because I was going through the comments, and there's it's just there's like 150 comments, and it's people arguing back and forth about the theories, and Roger did this, and can you believe that they get away with it, and like, yeah, thank God he's finally in jail, got what's coming to him, and then just one dude commented, if your last name's Rogerson. Why would you name your son Roger? Who <laughs> <laughs> um, was doomed from that's that? That's so moment. funny because when you were like, there's a um, like a infamous or whatever like um, person from Karing Bar High. The only other person I know who went to Karing Bar High who I thought might be on your radar is um, Neil Cole Hatka. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, dude, I, if, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, should we go? I started listening at his. <laughs> Famously murdered by Roger Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> murdered an impression of Roger Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Would you go is the same year? Nah, no, 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 no. He's my, he's a bit younger than me. Um, but I didn't I didn't know him when I was there or anything. But um, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think later on I found we were chatting and he was like, oh, I went to the same school. Yeah, wow, yeah, right. yeah. So no, got up to no mischief at Caring Bar. Uh, no, not really. Not not at Caring Bar. I um, yeah, I just there wasn't much mischief to be done. Really, I mm -hmm. mean, it's a fucking you know, it's a school of nerds. I I think the, I don't know. Yeah, it was it was just like. I know it's now that, that, that yeah, the north section of Caring Bar High was like for a while like a famous abandoned yeah. Australia place because like yeah. they just ditched the school and it was just like covered in graffiti well, and stuff and the, people would break in. The, oh, cool. the top there, so Caring Bar High was sort of um, this huge block of land um, split into two halves, and the uh, they called the top, the top of the hill and the bottom of the hill. And the top school was they didn't realize this. They built it in like the I don't know fifties or whatever the fuck. Mm. They didn't really they hadn't really again classic like. 
not doing the due diligence. It was on, it was built on a swamp, I think. And so it just started to sink and sink and sink. <laughs> and so you'd, like the doors wouldn't close properly and they'd like oh bang and stuff. And like you couldn't like the window, some of the windows you could see cracking under the pressure of the sinking and stuff. <laughs> uh, and so after we left, they just abandoned it and moved over. And they were like, everyone's in the bottom school now. <laughs> and then it became like an urban exploration place where like yeah. people would, or like a place where people would like live if like if they needed a squat or whatever. They could, right. have, could have craned in another school on top. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. just just pushing just them just down. Yeah, yeah, like the foundations of this school yeah. is another school. Yeah. 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 The photos are pretty cool. Like uh, I think they're from 2014 and it's mm. just like abandoned rooms, but like with everything still in them, like, yeah. Music room still has instruments like vinyl records in them and stuff yeah. like that. Dumb and shit in there. I believe that oh. that's where they filmed the reboot of Puberty Blues it is, as well. It is. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. like there are reports like where people being like, yeah, we're just filming this abandoned <laughs> school like cleaned up for the yeah. you know the for cameras the cameras. Right but then you look around, there's just like a cinder block in the middle of the room <laughs> and stuff like that. Jeez. Well, there's also that abandoned. Oh, I think it's completely gone now. But there was that big castle that I found when I was looking. Oh, in Illawong. Yeah, yeah, Adventureland. Yeah, the Adventure Castle. castle. Adventure like, Castle. That was a uh, that was an author. He um, I got I got the story here. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. The it's uh, basically it was this guy. Uh, his name was Lester Sinclair, but his uh, uh, nom de plume. He was a famous author mm. in the wartime. He was called John Mystery. Which is <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so good. Such yeah. a boring first name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most exciting second name. <laughs> 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 yeah, and then the pickup artist mystery was like, why don't we just get rid of the John <laughs> and, and I'll put on a big fuzzy hat. But yeah, he he was like a much loved like a children's author, and they reckon that in between, uh, I think like 1938 and 52, he produced like 300 to 400 novels Damn. for children, what? just because like people were going to war, and there was not no one was putting shit out, so he mm. was just like. Well, this sounds like a job for John Mystery. <laughs> and so he's putting them out. Did he write mystery stories or just kids' books? Uh, kids' books. So he came up with uh, uh, the story of the Woolly Sisters, Pearl and Plain, and the characters of Dr. Platypus and Ernie the Emu. And then right. there's like a se- selected bibliography. Famous that private I, eye, Ernie the Emu. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's a selected bibliography where most of it is like the uh, the adventures of uh, Ernie the Emu. And then, But then his first book is called Ten Little N-Words. And I was just oh, like, oh. oh. Yeah. Like, like, literally? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, the name of the book. Oh, oh, and, and it's not Jeez. N-word. Right. <laughs> it's, it's the word, but like... Damn. Damn. John Mystery. Yeah. <laughs> and he Mystery used his well. racist writings to buy a castle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like, that, 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 there's sort of remnants of it and stuff around. That I remember as a kid you would see like occasionally just like weird walls and stuff jutting out of like bits of bushland and stuff because it was pretty big. And there was like, if you went down towards the water, there was all this like just weird bits of shit that you would see, like, yeah, kind of turrets and stuff. Yeah. yeah. It so, is cool. Like, the photos, it looks like a castle. Because he was famous yeah. for, like, basically, like, in his books. I don't know how this happens, but because it, it sounds more like a magazine, but he had, like, kind of, like, a letters to the editor section where he'd, like, <laughs> like <laughs> re- respond. Dear John, please, please stop using the N-word. Yeah. <laughs> for the love of God. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, so his, uh, the, 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 sec- the segment, sorry, was called Dear Cobber. So he'd write like, oh, dear Cobbers, like I got your letter the other day. It was lovely, blah, blah, blah. And just like write letters back to the kids. And uh, like apparently that was why people loved it because he was quite like, you know, oh. he was an author that would give back and like respond to people being like, oh, man, the fact that you read my stories makes me so happy. Mm-hmm. And then um, because like the mystery, like he built this castle and it was called um, Adventure Castle. And the thing that he'd put in all his dear Cobber letters was like, when you write a letter to me, all you need to do is address it to John Mystery and then write Adventure Castle Sydney. And that's all. And they'll fucking find it. Seriously? Like, so one so, castle yeah, so, there's no, so it wasn't like, you know, 52 Damn. Illawong yeah, Road. He was yeah. like, yeah, just write Adventure Castle. <laughs> and then I, I think what happened was he went broke eventually and then the you know, moved castle out. It honestly sounds like a guy who writes children's stories and then has a place called Adventure Castle. It sounds like the start of a pedophile I know, story. So totally I'm like, I'm, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the original no, it's I, I read yeah. like five to ten articles being like, where's, when's the shoe when's dropping? The shoe yeah. dropping? <laughs> <laughs> Where it was like, and then, but like, no, apparently not. I think the N-word stuff was enough. <laughs> you know, Thank you can't, God you can't he have, was racist. Yeah, you can't have two scandals, I guess. Um, but yeah, so wow. then the castle... And it was just a castle he lived in called Adventure Castle. It wasn't a like castle a castle they lived in, but I, uh, yeah, but I think yeah, they let I mean? 
Much like um, Hing Neverland said, Ranch. much yeah, much like Neverland Ranch, <laughs> much like Hing said, where with the guy with the fucking animals, yeah. like you could just let kids go there for like a low rent excursion. This so, was all shut down by the time I was there. But yeah, 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 yeah. This is all. Yeah. So yeah, I mean to lend credence to what you were saying, like kids were invited to the castle and could hang out there, and it yeah. It is a miracle that there was not further <laughs> paragraphs about yeah. it. Thank God. And it's like, but from all accounts, because I I saw like some stuff where people commented on it, saying like, "Oh, I'm um, John Mystery's grandson, yeah. Kevin Mystery." <laughs> yeah. Oh, very long mysteries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And was like, "Yeah, he was a really nice guy. He genuinely loved children. Genuinely loved writing books. And yeah. like, because mm-hmm. there were." There were rumors like uh, apparently like he moved to Australia to join the circus or something, which is a really cool <laughs> thing to do. Move to Illawong and just be like, that's it. I'm joining the circus. This guy's life is insane. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh my God. But yeah, yeah. 300 books. It would, be, it would be hard if you were a children's author and you just wanted a castle and everyone's like, you a pedophile. You're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Can I just yeah. live my life? I guess you know? I have to be a successful adult fiction yeah. writer <laughs> to get my pedophile castle off the ground. And the, yeah. the castle was turned into flats before it was completely knocked down, which yeah. would have been a cool little like moment you get to live in a castle but and so they fully knocked it down except for like some tarots yeah there's like a couple of tarots a couple of walls yeah Yeah. Yeah. right that's weird it's pretty cool to like live in a castle yeah Yeah. I mean the photos look sick if you're listening to this look them up they're cool yeah that's awesome yeah, no, I w- it would be great if it was still around. It's so weird they just like, oh, let's buy. I guess that's what they do in Sydney now, just make apartments out of anything. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, if you look at, like, even, like, the serious building recently, yeah, people yeah, are like, yeah. ah, well, people still in that. Down. You know, yeah, yeah. I'm disused. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, um, I wanted to do a little bit of a – we always have a local – politician scandal oh yes which <laughs> one you, is it you got two yeah, uh, yeah we got we got some fucking gems in yeah the <laughs> yeah i don't know if it's in the water down there or you just get a, the short stick from a, the parties or whatever but there's two there's a more recent one uh the state local member for miranda which is encompasses this yeah, area Shire, yeah um alini patinos mm-hmm. she was elected in 2015 the age of 28 which is, is a, and then in the five years or six years since like the, mm-hmm. the, this all happened um so many scandals like all of them fairly innocuous but just i don't know how you can be this right re- busy busy doing scandals. very <laughs> busy not a lot else happening but uh the first got on the radar when in 2017 um she went to the state of origin with john barillaro mm-hmm. um queen Bo's <laughs> finest yeah. um and took his uh, got driven home in his uh minister like his car, car or whatever. And then uh, the next morning they checked in the back seat of the car and there was a massive pool of vomit in the car. <laughs> <laughs> she, just, she just puked her huge, the guts up. Oh, clearly had got like absolutely so tied one I mean, on the origin. That a scandal. But she didn't really? tell anyone. The next uh, driver just came to get it. It was like, what the <laughs> hell is this shit? I don't know if I'd have told any. If I was in John Barillaro's car yeah, and vomited. Dude, that's why you've never been MP. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's why you're working well, in the circus as a bed. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll just go back to the circus. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she didn't tell anyone the actual driver. Been balancing on a ball. <laughs> <laughs> I've been getting really good at it. <laughs> oh, Jamie's getting fish, flying fish at it. Man, you should see me in a fez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she didn't even. Uh, but what happened was that the driver the next morning, like, dobbed, said. Barrel Aro spewed up in the car. He said, it wasn't me. I get, So she didn't come forward at all. And then she was forced to offer an apology and uh, and present a statement. Unfortunately, so I became f- unwell in the car. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, oh, yeah. I was yeah. picked out of the origin. Yeah, <laughs> upset tummy, sure. I mean, you we've know. all become uh, unwell after the origin <laughs> in our years. Fuck. Apparently, it was a pool of vomit. Like it was not good oh, in the damn. back. Uh, and everyone was like, what's going on? She high, She got. She's like this with Barilaro before he really became sort of like the yeah, stink of the. Close. Yeah, real close. She hired his daughter, who was twenty years old, as a media advisor. So he's just, he's just. She just given him all these fucking mm. family friend stuff, and then she got in a lot of hot water. And the current, the current treasurer. He wasn't the treasurer at the time. He was like, but important minister Steve mm. Keane. Um, when Steve Keane's girlfriend, Matt Keane, isn't it? Uh, Steve? Oh, is it Steve? I think it's Matt. Kane. Oh, sorry, maybe. Well, it's the current New South Wales treasurer. If mm. I've got the name wrong, what's on me? But then he, his girlfriend at the time, shared um, a, on Instagram um, a message between uh, Patinos and Keane, and which uh, she was like, "Look at this! I go away to Adelaide, and this is what my you know boyfriend gets up to." These are current members of Parliament, yeah. and Keane was like, "I'm tempted to drive down and see you." 
Tina's like, oh, miss me? And he's like, yeah, really need to fuck you. <laughs> and then she, what what a like, romantic. Huh? She's like, oh, it's that time of the month. And he's like, okay, next time. And then she denied that she's sleeping with him. Oh, good. So way. was this on Instagram? Just like messaging it, it, each she, other, DMing or whatever? Yeah, she the, the girlfriend saw Keen's mobile phone, screenshotted it, and then she posted on Instagram, like, look what my, like, like look you know, what I'm breaking up with this. Can't, you know, look what this love rat's Damn. doing. Now, Keen bad. got a slap on the wrist. The Gladys at the time was like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. Nothing happened to Patinos. The girlfriend, who was an advisor to Malcolm Turnbull, got sacked for, oh, posting, for posting it. It's, it's ridiculous. Hell. It's ridiculous. That is crazy. I man. know. She was asked to resign. It's a million dollar idea in there, just an encrypted messaging service for politicians. It's Dude. crazy because I was reading them like, so she, the girlfriend was an advisor to Turnbull. She's dating. It's just like, you know, comedy. Everyone dates and, mm. that, and there's all these scandals. It's like, yeah. I guess they just swing in the same circles. It's all the same shit, you know? I mean, it really is just like comedy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's exactly. Like like vomiting comedy. cars being like, that was hasting. <laughs> 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 it was fine. Um, in 2018, when bushfires burnt through the whole electorate, including right in uh, in Alfred's Point, Alfred's which is point, right, right next, right and, and Menai. So yep. bordering, like literally across the, it's the, is it the highway there that yeah. separates the yeah, yeah. So it went up to there and she jumped on a jet, went to the Gold Coast to watch the netball. <laughs> and hope she didn't take a hire car. Because at night. least like Scobo went to Hawaii. You know what I mean? She's got the Gold Coast. You can't afford to go to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, the goalie. To watch the netball. So then um, she got in a lot of trouble for that. And then she recently got stood down as a minister in August um, after bullying claims were made against her. She called people in her office. Um, stupid, retarded, and hyperbolically threatened to kill them. Um, so <laughs> then they were like, "All right, that'll do for you." So she's still a member, but she was a she's now a backbencher. Right. But she okay. sort of pales to, and I don't want to get going into the details yeah. of the federal member up until recently, Mister Craig oh. Kelly. <laughs> yeah. He's the yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I don't know. I and mean, this guy, there's so much to go into, but I love the backstory of Craig more than anything because it's so funny. So he, after high school. Um, in the area, I don't know exactly where, but roughly in the area, he, he worked, he, he started working as a furniture salesman for his parents' yeah. furniture business. Mm -hmm. He then took over his furniture uh, parents' business, ran it for 15 years. It went bankrupt <laughs> with debts of 4 million. And then he just became a member of parliament. That's his whole <laughs> life. Oh, he's man, failing yeah. to sell sofas. Dude. And then he's like the member for years. It's like yeah. for 12 months, he was a member. Like he, he just, he's like, all right, that'll do me. And then they're like, well, do you want to become the local <laughs> yeah. member? Yeah, no, that dude fucking sucks. Um, he's obviously a famous anti-vaxxer. Yeah. He's, um, really into like the whole, um, what was that? Hydroxychloroquine and stuff. Yeah. Like and stuff. Thinks of himself as like Australia's Trump and stuff. Like it, the dude is just unhinged. He's so it's like, so at least Trump had a bit of charisma about him. Yeah, he? Like, unfortunately. Like, yeah, no, he, yeah, he's not funny. He sucks. And he, he, has, that, he so has that perpetual stupid. look like someone showed him his family business books like and he's realized they're <laughs> bankrupt <laughs> <laughs> well he yeah like there's so many there's too much all this climate stuff he he called oh, he's a climate denier as he, well he dialed yeah. into a british tv show when all the bad bushfires are going on as like i think they were like let's get an australian contact in and he, he was like i'll do it they didn't know who it was oh man he that called, talent book is getting <laughs> yeah, 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 so, yeah. Bad. so British uh, meteorologist Laura Tobin he called her on the show an ignorant pommy weather girl who had no idea what she's talking about despite she has a university degree in physics and meteorology <laughs> and he has bankruptcy <laughs> <laughs> <He's a laughs> stuff, hey, I've actually got a Western Sydney degree in sophology <laughs> Piers Morgan called him a disgrace who should wake up. If Piers Morgan is called you a disgrace, <laughs> he, he implied during bushfire season that environmentalists were responsible for arson mm -hmm. and <laughs> he suggested that the Bureau of Meteorology was altering weather records. Oh, man, yeah, dude, that doctor into the deep state. Yeah, yeah. The deep state. Just he like the he should talk to my auntie. I reckon they get a lot of <laughs> <laughs> Facebook sharing. Uh, just, I mean... So he, was the, he was the MP after, like, kind of when I... Uh, left school but when I was in primary school we had the then MP so I, I, I was a kid in the 90s right mm. and the then MP for Hughes was a lady called Donna Vale who I think was a pilot or something mm. or I can't remember exactly what she'd done uh, before she was a member of parliament, parliament. but um, she uh, came, she 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 uh, made the claim that Australians were quote aborting themselves out of ex out of existence. Oh, <laughs> she, she, was, she was like a Veterans Affairs minister and had some pretty controversial stuff. But I remember I would have been like year three or year four maybe. She came to our school, 
and it was the height of Pauline Hanson. Mm. And she, I remember I was about, actually, I was in like year six. Anyway, she said to um, us all, she made all the non-white kids stand up. And then she was, and then she was like, see, like when I was growing up here, there were no Chinese kids or whatever. Oh people, uh, my but now God. there are like three or whatever. She's like, Australia's changing. Oh like, what my the God. Are you on your standing like, oh, up? Yeah, yeah. And then she, made me stand, and then she, and then she, then she was like, and you know, some people, and like, we had some like, um, uh, Middle Eastern kids who were, who were refugees kind of thing who'd come and live and stay at the school um, because of, you know, one of the many wars Australia really was yeah, involved in. Yeah. Sure. That, and she, she, she was like, you know, and, um, she, and but she was like, but the Chinese kids are good. Like, you know, they've learned the language and stuff. Oh unlike God. these other kids. Oh and it was like God. fucking crazy, this right? Because I, I remember being like in year six and just being like, this doesn't feel like, <laughs> I know she's saying I'm one of the good ones, but this still feels really <laughs> cruel. Oh my God. <laughs> I love how there like, was three of you and she was like, 20 years ago, there was one. That's triple the amount. <laughs> <you know? laughs> so, yeah. So my parents were like, I, I was like, went home to my mom. I was like, hey, this weird thing happened at school. And my mom was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Jesus like, Christ. She like went down to the school and was talking to the teacher. She's like, you let this psycho into the school? It's like, yeah. it's like point of my kid to be like, he shouldn't be or whatever. Oh. And the teacher was like, well, it's just the local member. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's yeah, that's the worst reveal of all. Yeah, 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 <laughs> she's yeah, yeah, a local yeah. member. We can't say yeah. no. Yeah, yeah, no she's, like, oh, yeah, she's our representative. We all voted for her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> how did that, yeah. I mean, like, I don't know if that was a local story or anything, but no, how no, would no, that? It's that, the Shire, bro. Yeah, it's the Shire. Like, is there any point where the teachers are looking, like when she's like, okay, all the Chinese kids stand up and they're just like, well, like, I don't know, like Illawong was like, it wasn't like a, I mean, there, there was some like overt racism and stuff, but it wasn't like, it was like a kind of like, honestly, like ignorant, polite racism, that yeah. kind of thing where it's like, um, I remember like one time for Chinese New Year, my teacher gave me like, like a silk like shirt to put on and a conical hat and was like, it's Chinese New Year, Michael. And I was like, Okay, cool. Like, and then when you're like, you know, seven, you're just like, okay, this is fun yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I get to wear a fun yeah. hat. And you look back, you're like, man, that's great. Like, yeah. can you imagine if they like got a Chinese kid today and were like, put on the fucking hat, bro? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we like our school was extremely white in Newcastle, mm. and it was the same where we had a Sri Lankan girl come mm. in like year four, and like that was wild to us. <laughs> she, she was like, <laughs> you know, it, and we, it would, but it was like everyone was just tried to be so nice to her that I imagine looking back, she was like, that was very weird. You know, it's like, hi, Vegeta, you know, we're all, we love you. You know, just so like, embarrassingly like. Cause like, yeah, it's like so confused. Cause like when I was just out of high school and just started uni, the criminal riots happened, right? Yeah. Just kind of in that area. And like, obviously I'm not white, but I got the text message being like, let's go to a race ride. <laughs> they picked like you. that's, and I'm like, do you, why would you think I would want to be a part of this? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, it, it was your local member. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pick a side, Michael. You got to be on are the side. Are, are you actually one of the good ones, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, well, no, the shy is crazy. That yeah. is a crazy story for years six yeah, as well. Yeah, it was wild. Did so, like just be when like you're sort of coming into yourself and like okay the. They're making me stand. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> They're that, saying I'm good. Doesn't feel very feels good. Strange. That'd be crazy if they just secretly recorded her saying that in to someone, let alone like demonstrating in front of the children <laughs> yeah. she's talking yeah. about. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, you know, like, heard that on a phone call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, she's at the school being like, no, this is multicultural. Yeah. Stand up, <laughs> Let me prove my point. If that yeah. happened in 2022 and someone pulled out a fucking iPhone, that woman would be yeah. <laughs> be so Phones finished. Schools, yeah. man, yeah. of course. That's why you wow. confiscate them. <laughs> I did want to just quickly wrap up on Craig because there's so much oh, more. Sure. I don't want to talk more about Craig himself, but just even his office manager. I don't know if you guys have seen this thing. Is Frank Zumbo. Oh. Oh, this guy's a fucking creep. The yeah. cre like just and it and it's so like so he's fifty five years old. Related to the macaroon guy at all? Or? <laughs> so, Unclear. So Unclear. I didn't link him in the <laughs> Daily Mail article I read. They didn't draw that line, but um, <laughs> that would have been the first thing I investigated. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been like, all right, we need a travel budget to go to Zumbo. <laughs> yeah. Jamie would have went on a very long tangent. There. <laughs> he's just got all these desserts. He's like, how's a pod research? <laughs> oh fuck, you know, <laughs> macaroons are alright. Uh, uh, so Frank Zumbo, 55, he was accused by five women of um, over 20 charges, including, you know, very, very, like, indecent assault, sexual touching, and basically a lot of, like, just the grossest, Dude. just the worst of, like, power dynamic bullshit in an office, just being the creepiest guy. And, 
like I don't want to go in and just, but one woman recorded. He used to insist on picking her up and dropping her home, and she was in her twenties. And he she recorded because she was like, I need to get this on tape just the, their conversations because mm. some of the stuff he was doing, he would scold her if she posted a photo on Facebook that he thought she drew attention to her breasts. Right, and the woman said that she told Zombo that contacting her at two a.m. about the image had ruined her night, and then he replied, "Well, the fact you refused to delete the photo ruined my night." Oh this is my all. god! He, he, He's psychos. They're all he fucking chastised psychos. her for not inviting him to her university graduation. He constantly grabbed her leg, like in the car. Yeah. He said no one would ever love her like he did. He got he got oh, mad. So he, was he making romantic overtures? Yeah, here, like or is- like. Yeah, overtly and just saying like, "Do you have a boyfriend?" and then being like mad when she's like when she wouldn't tell him, and basically saying, "Well, you shouldn't date anyone because they're all going to be horrible to you." Just like like a ten-year-old boy would think yeah. how to hit on a girl, yeah, like right? a fifty-five-year-old, fifty-five-year-old man yeah, in a and it was hit her. He was the boss of this this woman at the at the office. He said, uh, and then he got mad at her for refusing his request to follow her on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, right. And he goes. I'm the guy that for two years nonstop has devoted a considerable amount of time to you. That alone should have got me the respect of your Instagram follow. Man, that's yeah. the sa- most it's pathetic so thing. so yeah. pathetic. This guy's uh, MSN away messenger thing would have been the saddest <laughs> My Chemical Romance <laughs> lyrics. It's, it's a sad, also problematic year, year five yeah, boy, stalker, in a, and, he's, yeah. and he's 35 years older than her. But it just goes on. It's so ridiculous. It's just like, how did this guy become the... Office yeah, because, manager. Because they're all fucking, like, because they're all Crazy. psychos. They're all, all just like, and it's the culture of it all. It's fine. Oh, yeah. One um, little connection to last week's episode with Craig Kelly that I did see was oh, that yeah. he he got egged recently. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were talking about Egg Boy, egg last, boy week. last week. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was just in a park in Melbourne somewhere. And just this lady went up and fucking cracked him and it was That's the best. Right. And he was like, you're a disgrace to democracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his face then would have been a real picture. Oh, you know. oh man. Yeah, man. Long mate continue. It's a, yeah, man. Illawong, um, man, it's a real wild time. Yeah. yeah. Are your parents still around there? No, no. Nah, nah, they left in like 2015, maybe 2016. So you don't go back? like? Oh, I do it every now and again. I go back a couple of times a year to visit friends and stuff. Like, oh, um, cool, like cool. all my friends, like my main sort of non-comedy group of friends of people from um, like primary school and stuff. Yeah, so I see yeah. them a fair bit. And they're still in the area? They, they still like In it. and out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Where's yeah. the place to go in Illawong? That you're the place to go? Um, my friend Paddy's house. <laughs> the place to go. <laughs> his mum his makes good nachos. So. <laughs> got, a, uh, got a bunch yeah. of lizards as yeah. well. <laughs> 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 no, there's like in, in Illawong, like there's like there's nothing real. There's no like, sh- there's a couple of shops and stuff, but there's not really like a, I think there was kind of a bar for a bit. It was kind of a bar slash restaurant, but it like mm. wasn't, a hangout place like the cool the only actually cool stuff to do is like walk through the bushland and there's like quite a bit of like uh there's like a quite a severe cliff that you can do rock climbing on um and there's like a couple and there's like obviously like the rivers to go boating and stuff on um but yeah there's not actually anything like cool to do you, <laughs> yeah when, right when you're growing when you're going out like would you go into the city if you want to go out oh, or was like it more like the local yeah, yeah we'd go to like the shire hotspots um Northies in Cronulla, where yeah. you would often see NRL players fighting. Um, <laughs> Carmen's in Miranda, which yeah. uh, was kind of like a, which had one of those things that you could text message, had one of those like um, boards you could send a text to and then your message would come up. And be oh, like, oh, I love that. Hey, that's the it. dude that's in the cool. grey jacket is hot, or hey, the chicken, the oh, whatever. Like cool. that yeah, kind that of thing. Rule. Bring that back. Uh, yeah. Drew's <laughs> standing there in a grey jacket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Drew's sending messages to himself. <laughs> yeah. like, what does everyone think about the guy in the grey jacket? short king over there. You're the hottest guy. Like, <laughs> we all agree, right, everyone? <laughs> but it was like not filtered at all because it was like 2004. Or whatever. Yeah. So you could just send like the craziest shit on there, like just like this, this just like you know, it'd be like my friend Dave or whatever, just shat his pants or whatever, <laughs> just like that like kind of stuff. That's was, so cool. Yeah, yeah, completely unfiltered. Yeah. <laughs> I did have a look at just like on Google Street View and that, and oh, it's yeah. kind of of all the Sydney suburbs we've done, it mm-hmm. looks. And feels the most like a Canberra suburb because I spent yeah, some time right. in Canberra. Oh, so many uh, um, uh, roundabouts. Well, I guess it's, it's <laughs> just it's all bushland, cul de sac roundabout yeah, things, yeah. and then just like a central shop. So it's like yeah. Woolies, yeah, maybe a takeaway. It's like it's yeah. very kind of yeah. weird. So I did have to. I travelled because we we like to do local pub reviews. Oh sure. Uh, I did travel a little bit south um, to the. I think it's called the Club Central Menai. Oh yes, it's like the. I think it's like a Catholic club that's sort of. Um, 
that has like food and stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. thought I just assumed it was like an RSL, but it seemed no, like an RSL Catholic kind of club. vibe, a Catholic yeah, club. Yeah, okay, yeah. there you go. Um, and we'll start off just just a pretty standard two star from Ashley. Great atmosphere. Food not served as described. Found beard hair in beef patty, in brackets, yeah. or, or at least I hope it was a beard hair and not a pube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll update that to a one star. <laughs> yeah. it's a DNA yeah. I know the nearest, like one of the, uh, there was an article, I think again in the Daily Mail, because of course, because they have to run this shit, but like, you know how like the Food Safety Authority runs like the name and shame every year of places yeah. that violate yeah. health code yeah. violations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Men Eyes, Domino's or Pizza Hut showed up in there because oh, someone dude. got a pizza and there was a Band-Aid as one of the toppings. Dude, oh, nah, that, that's not even the worst one. My friend Dave, um, I'll say his name's Dave F. Um, <laughs> don't know why I need to. Anyway, <laughs> Dave worked, Mystery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he worked at the local Nando's and when we were in high school, he, like, he saw a guy who we worked with, like his... Not his manager, but like one of the other guys, like one of the older kids who worked in there, piss in like the big thing of mayonnaise. Oh, oh, and we were like, that's oh, awful. He was like, that's crazy. And he, and so we like, we, yeah, we like called the food people and dubbed in and was like, hey, um, you should go to the, like the Nando's at Cronulla or whatever. And like, I don't know if like, you can do this, but you can test the mayonnaise for <laughs> piss. <laughs> <laughs> they got, they got into the fucking um, thing as well. Oh, I think it was, a, was it Nando's or Porto's? I don't know. It was one, some, one of the chicken places, but they got in the list that year. Yeah. Jesus. You can't, th- I can't think too much about like where my pe- like Domino's course, Peach and stuff. Cause, of course. Yeah. Cause I know what it was like to be a 15 year old. You're 15 year old. Yeah, and, working 15, in food and, and, and then, and then, and you're like just getting like a thousand peaches. Your manager's yelling and you're like, yeah, I'll throw a fucking bandaid in this. Yeah. Yeah. World. <laughs> it is great. Like as an adult, you know, I'm in my 30s, going to McDonald's and just looking around and being like, there are children running off this so restaurant. Right. This, this is, is wrong. Right. This Where is are weird. the adults? Yeah. yeah. Um, Why is that man pissing in the man? <laughs> <laughs> Why is Ronald McDonald pissing? <laughs> um, so, yeah, you start off pretty tame, all right? Bit of a pube in the burger, whatever. Uh, this one actually makes more sense now that you've told me it's a Catholic club. This mm. is one star from Philip. He goes, never again. Charge $27 for two glasses of wine. Gross greed. What happened to the guy who could turn water into wine? <laughs> Rumor has it he's locked in a basement and they won't let him out. <laughs> so Drew, before Drew knew it was a Catholic club, he's like, there was a guy there that could do that? <laughs> it really does make a lot more sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, um, that's, that's surprising to me because it was always really cheap when we would go there. Yeah, okay. And you could also sign up to like a membership card. I remember there was like a membership card. And if you got, oh, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was like, Every time you got a schooner, which was like it was like two dollars schooners on like Tuesdays or whatever. Oh hell yeah! It was like fucking great. This is like yeah. in the early two thousands, and every time every dollar you spent, you got a point or something. And then if you got a hundred points, there was like a um, like a prize. There was like a it was like tilt, but for drinking. You know how you go right. to like um, time zone or whatever, yeah. and you have tickets to hand in, but they were on your card, and so you could like pick prizes off the wall, oh, or whatever. Wow, shit. And there was yeah. So that if you got a hundred a hundred points on your fucking card you get like one of those like a big soft teddy that you might give your best gal at the carnival yeah, or whatever yeah. Yeah. Oh, for drinking yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. hey darling look at this they have to pull us on in the high yeah, car yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's oh, good yeah. I remember I just remember a lot of nights just being like we get the fucking bed tonight oh, boys yeah, man, get the bed incentive there yeah, for sure um, those two I like the second one that's creative this guy pulls no punches Scott uh, one star three years ago this club is run by a pack of dogs <laughs> <laughs> and reception staff are putrid. Also, they have dodgy parking facilities. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. You can't yeah. lead with yeah. that. And then like, um, this one, like, uh, f- this <laughs> honestly reads like like the opening like monologue to like some like a Shakespeare play or something. Like this guy is setting <laughs> a fucking scene. One start, and by the way, I got this yesterday. And by the time, so when I screenshotted it, it was posted 43 minutes earlier. Damn. So this okay. one's fresh. Fresh. He's got it, he goes, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Do not go there. <laughs> All caps. Well, to the restaurant anyway. <laughs> there are two parts to this tale of woe. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> one part is mine to tell, and the other is my best friend who organized what we now call the great birthday debacle. <laughs> Which is about passing the buck, telling lies, and covering up said lies told by the staff. And this because just wants to write for pedestrians. <laughs> this is John sure. Mystery. Yeah. <laughs> His spirit is alive and well. Yeah. 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 And because of lies told, my child ended up sitting on the floor to eat his meal. Oh, <laughs> my God. so they just have a chair for the side chair. So that's the first paragraph. 
Oh, there's multiple paragraphs. <laughs> oh, yeah. How, how many paragraphs are there? Uh, only two. Okay. I, I won't go. I won't take up more than, uh, you know, 20, 25 minutes. Yeah. Uh, he goes, the food at the Terrace restaurant is bland, cold, if it's not raw, uncooked. And if it happens to be cooked, it's overcooked. <laughs> Burnt. Cremated. <laughs> <laughs> this, this dude rules. Please do not waste your money or your time. Now, I can honestly say I haven't been there in over four years, but was once a frequent diner. The food was excellent four years ago. The service now is deplorable, and the food was, well, let's just say if I was a starving, hungry, stray alley cat, I still wouldn't touch it with a 40-foot barge pole. <laughs> and, and then in brackets, in brackets, he just clarifies, I would not eat it. <laughs> is that what that meant? Uh, and then he goes, please heed my warning and avoid. Avoid so you don't have the same disappointment we had. Also, the food is so terrible that a young lady hurled hers all over the floor. Blue chunks heaved her little heart out. And the restaurant staff just looked on with blank faces instead of cleaning up the vomit. I had to tell the front desk concierge club management to get them to pull their fingers out and clean up the biohazard. Overall, not an enjoyable evening. <laughs> <laughs> Quite disappointed. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> so the club there is, is pretty bad. Like, it was cheap for, to go drinking at, but, like, the food wasn't very good. Around the corner, though, there's, like, a... There's like a real fancy restaurant called like Salt or something, but um, it's kind of funny because it's the kind of place where everyone goes. It's like the only like nice restaurant in the area, mm -hmm. so it's where everyone goes for any big night out. Yeah, uh, but it does mean that you'll have like anytime you go there, there'll be like eight other couples or whatever having there. But it's um, I remember it was like a, basically the, the the kind of reason it's funny is because it was the big first date spot yeah mm. so if you're like if you, oh, i guess not even a first date but just like classic like teenage like shitty date spot yeah, but it's yeah. like yeah. you want to go for a nice meal there's only one restaurant you got it you got to salt yeah um so just like you would go there and then you would either see like people like awkwardly trying to date or whatever or like trying also to be a place where people would go to like to have big conversations and like breakups and stuff oh, people sick. crying like a lot a lot of like people in their 20s just having real full on nights yeah, and yeah. salt yeah the yeah. life cycle of a relationship yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah, yeah. every night <laughs> and then you're just bored in your anniversary 20 years married <laughs> yeah. sitting there just looking at each other like what are we oh, doing what the here fuck yeah, yeah. Say, people are breaking up and you're like fuck I'd love to be that I mean, yeah, yeah I'd love to be on it yeah I love that though because it, what Hing was describing is exactly what Crenides was in the hills when yeah. they grew, everyone was just like like everyone like I think when you're like 16, 17 and yeah. you're just like starting to date, you'd go to Hogs Breath because sure. it's like, yep, that's a cafe, sure. you know, yeah. but it's like, yeah. it's, it's, like it's, when you're, it's not yeah. a cafe. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's got it in the name. Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> but it's very, very fun. No, let's go yeah, get a cup of coffee and Hogs Breath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when, when, you turn, when you turn 18 yeah. and you want to class it up a little, you go to Crenides. Yeah. The worst Italian franchise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the other place that was kind of a late night hangout, because it, it's like a very religious area. The other place that was a late night hangout was like a Gloria Jeans that was there. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so like sometimes on like a Friday night, you know, because there was no real bars, you know, there, you'd have to go into like Sutherland or maybe to the tavern at Bangor to get a beer really. Uh, or, to the, or to the Catholic club where people are blowing chunks. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the Glory Jeans sometimes, you just wanted a place that wasn't, like your parents weren't. Um, yeah. Yeah, so again, a lot of frustrated, horny teens there just hanging out being like, yeah, this is this is cool. Like just drinking a lot of cafe, uh, yeah, caffeine yeah, yeah, and like yeah. trying yeah. to yeah. like yeah, yeah. New York riders in a yeah, coffee yeah, yeah, shop. Yeah, yeah. The of nearest Glory yeah. Jeans to me was in a complex called Norwest, which was like directly opposite, like 50 meters away from the Hillsong Church. So yeah, I know right, exactly okay. what you yeah, mean yeah. when you say- I think there might be a like, religious- I think, I think- Are they yes. some of owned I by Hillsong or something? Glory Hillsong. Jeans is. I don't know if it's Hillsong, but it's some, um, it might be like Seventh Day or something. Yeah, there's like there's some, some, some church owns like a lot of them. They yeah. make a mean white chocolate mocha though. white chocolate I don't want to cast from a- Lauren Bonner will agree with me. When she was 17, yeah. No, she never- Oh man. White chocolate mocha. It's a, you it's guys a, should do live episodes at some of these shitty restaurants that people like. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. so that. good. The second time that like come on, we should go out to Salt at Menai or whatever. And Lauren Bonner comes on, you should go to fucking Glory Jeans, Glory Jeans <laughs> in Norway. <Yeah. laughs> just order five white chocolate mocha, yeah. and then they'll just be like, be you know what? Buzzers. These actually are pretty ambience. good. I don't know how the other diners would react to me going hurling, heaving. <laughs> 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 That's why I wish like you know like Planet Hollywood in Sydney was still alive instead mm, of Starbar. Yeah. Like that would have been a yeah. cool one. Because, like, yeah. that, I don't know if you remember, but, like, they had, like, a premiere in the 90s where, like, stars went. Like, yeah. Sylvester Sloan went there, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, Sylvester Sloan. And like they a, owned it, right? They part owned it. Like, Sly some celebrities. Sylvester Sloan, Bruce, Bruce Willis, Demi Moore owned it. And Sly Sick. definitely went down there. And there, I found, like, an article ages ago about, like, how big that, like, the premiere was. Like, the George Street was, like, 
cordoned off basically Damn. so all these people could have like a rack of ribs for 30 bucks <laughs> mm. it's pretty cool and, and now it's, it's Dante running yeah. the comments, so. <laughs> it's so great you know before that gig like Dante's in there charging fucking idiots $40 to go see comedy while there's a nude sliced Stallone model <laughs> yeah. standing there and you're just like it took yeah. me so long to realise why that in the that bonkers the, not bonkers whatever it is that, that when Starbucks it was because it was a cinema they would show movies in oh, there yeah, 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 yeah because yeah. it was Planet Hollywood so I was yeah. like this is a weird function room yeah. for you know but it was because they'd be like yeah there's Slice alone or I didn't even clock that I just assume it was always purpose built for comedy and Don, <laughs> Dante's been there since the <laughs> opening and it's just been running kind of like Slice alone's walking in he's like yeah give me the ribs and he's like well, you didn't have your ticket there, partner. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I recognize we're just wrapping up on this, yep. but you know how you were like, did you get an opportunity of mischief? This is the, I, I just remembered some, uh, an annual prank we would do. Oh, oh hell yeah. yeah. Um, which, in, uh, now that I'm going to explain it, is fucking lame and sucks. But <laughs> 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 we, we were like, there's this big tub of mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> no, so like every year from when we were like maybe 14 or 15, there was this one roundabout in Luang that my friend and I and a few other like friends, a group of us would go and we'd paint it in Christmas colours because we thought it was like a... It's like the lowest form of graffiti. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. like, like, it's just like a fun yeah. whatever, like red, white and green or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And uh, we would we'd do that every every year as like a fun Christmas thing. And every year the council would come and clean it off because they're like, this fucking sucks. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever. And so one year we... Um, it was just like Maybe it was year 11... Or year twelve, I don't know, but it was like a, it was like muck up day kind of areas. Um, oh god, this is so fucking lame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just telling you, I'm like you fucking loser. <laughs> oh, this fucking sucks. <laughs> Step us out. <laughs> There's only one way, one way in, one way out of Illawong, right? And uh, so we had this. We just we just got stole a bunch of street signs, painted the roundabout, and then diverted the traffic into this kind of like this weird loop that if you don't know Ilong, you'll just drive around not realizing this is before GPS. You'll just drive around not realizing that it's a loop because it's a really long loop. Yeah. And so um, we just diverted the traffic into this after we panned the roundabout, we diverted the traffic into this kind of loop. That's like probably like maybe two K's like you wouldn't. And the way it's laid out, you just don't realize it's a loop. And, I'm, and people were just like stuck doing laps of this <laughs> for like 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Like this, and like when you're like you know 16, you're like this is the greatest thing. Yeah. Ever done. But obviously, if anyone did that to me now, I'd be like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's not the least lame prank we've mentioned. Yeah, I mean that's a great. Yeah. Like, I don't mind, I don't yeah. mind that. Mm, yeah, you can sit there and like you know take a Count tally of the yeah, number of times yeah, you see the same yeah. number there was, one, there was a couple of cars we just sat there just like stoned out our brains just being like this is the greatest <laughs> thing <laughs> count that one yeah. around I mean yeah. it beats Tom Walker's prank of going to the traffic lights and pressing the pedestrian crossing sign so people would have to slow down at a red light <laughs> and then it would, wouldn't cross the <laughs> yeah, thing that yeah. was his big prank <laughs> <laughs> Well, should we wrap the last two questions? Yeah, yeah, let's do oh, it. Yeah. Okay, Hingers. Uh, mm-hmm. So someone tells you, hey, man, I'm coming down to Illawong mm-hmm. for a day and I need an itinerary. I need something to do. Oh, morning, sure. afternoon, and night. Well, what do you tell them to do? Where do you tell them to go? Uh, so three, morning, afternoon, night? Yeah. Yep. In the morning, you want to go to the river. So there's a jetty where the old ferry used to be. And that's 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 a fucking cool place to hang out. Uh, it's probably a bit crowded now, but like it's it's genuinely beautiful. You uh, there's, there's there's you have to bring your own food because there's no nothing down there. But like there's tire swings and there's fishing and stuff. Hell that's yeah. that's fucking sick. Mm. Um, afternoon, you probably want to go for a walk through the um, uh, the bushland at the back of Redmond Avenue, uh, which is kind of where the um, the rock climbing thing is. But there's another way to get down there, and that's a fucking sick bush walk. There's also, obviously, as in any bushland in suburban Sydney, a, a, um, a rumored suitcase full of pornos in there. Yeah, yeah. 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 oh, the suitcase. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in the bucket for one of those. <laughs> um, and then nighttime, uh, there's a Thai restaurant there that's all right. Um, but probably the actually the fun like the best thing to do is just like um, 
Well, I don't know. When I was a teenager, the best thing to do was like, we just go to a park and get drunk and hang out. Yeah, but not that yeah. I was really drinking, to be clear. Just watch your friends drink out and drink and make out with each other. Or yeah. you just sit on a seesaw by yourself. That's pretty cool. <laughs> a diet coke, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. oh, I'm getting kind of this. You know? <laughs> yeah, just watch other people get drunk and make out. That's that's uh, that's that's uh, real cool and not at all lame. Anyway, so that's morning, noon, night. That's what I'd do. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's not too yeah, bad. Little, I like yeah. that. Yeah. And then the last question... And I think you probably already answered this, but uh, your your comedy career and radio career has reached its absolute zenith. You, mm. you you've done everything you could possibly do Woo. with your millions of yeah, dollars. Yeah, would yeah. you settle down in Ilwong? Oh, I might. I might. Yeah. Okay, I, like I that. might. Just there, to uh, piss off that old state MP. <laughs> 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 can't get rid of me. No, nah, there's like because you there's um there's a couple of houses there that if you had like ten million dollars. I reckon it, it'd be fucking worth it because you um, they they build them into the side of the cliffs and they overlook the river. Oh, wow. So That's it's sick. like, yeah, it, they, and a lot of them are done by like, because um, in the Shire, a lot of the richest people are like tradies, obviously, because mm. it's a lot of home renos and stuff and they've done all right in the last couple of decades. Um, and so there's a lot of like houses that have been built over like, like basically extended home renos that the council don't know about kind of thing. Mm, and nice. so there's a lot, there's like my, my friend Luke's place, his dad was a builder. And the house was probably like six levels down a cliff, like the kitchen and then the bedroom and then blah, blah, blah. And it's like fucking cool because every, yeah, but like real unsafe. Like you could like <laughs> open a window and just like chuck shit out and it would like drop like 30 oh, meters. Wow. Jeez, yeah. Oh, yeah. But there's like some real fucking nice houses that if you had money, it'd be good. Hell yeah. But um, yeah, anyway, so I'd, I'd maybe if I was if I was rich enough, I might move back to your That's a great answer. Yeah, yeah, rebuild perfect. that castle, man. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If it's, uh, you know, if it becomes Hamish and Hingers. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool! Oh, man. All right, Hings, thank you so much for yeah, coming on. Do you no, have anything you want to plug? Uh, yeah, I don't know if anyone listening to this wants to come to a friend show. I'm doing some new material in a couple of weeks' time at the end of September at the Factory Theatre, the 28th through to the 20th of September through to the 1st of October. Uh, yeah, I've written a kind of some new jokes. You know what it's like at French time. You're like, oh, yeah. oh, fuck, uh, is this good? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, oh God. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, Can we mention, so I can boast that oh, I yeah. came up with Hing's uh, oh, you Melbourne did? Comedy Festival show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 What's yeah. What's it, was at, uh, it was at the greatest room is Sydney Comedy, Everly Comedy, and oh, Hing okay. was telling a story, and I said, you should call your show Kill Hing in the name of. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was, it was about some oh, death threats good. I'd gotten. Uh, yeah. And it was that kind of, it was like in a funny way. And then, and then Jamie was like, this, and I was like, fuck you. Yeah, I was, was so good. proud of it. Yeah. And then when yeah. you announced it, the first comment I saw was someone went, the song's actually just called Killing in the Name. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, no, that, that was a, that was a real fun show. And uh, what you could see is the embryonic version of something like that. Yes. Uh, where it'll be like 40 minutes of material and 20 minutes of me being like, I don't know, man, did that, was that any good? I don't know. I don't know, man. This community notice board podcast I went on, did you like it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, on the, the, yeah, 28th of September through to the 1st of October at the awesome. Factory Theatre. Cool. see that. Oh. We have something see. to plug. Mm -hmm. Do we? Yeah. Go for it. Merch, baby. Oh, oh Drew is now I'm wearing it. Uh, wearing a Hog's Breath t-shirt. It's a Strays podcast, baby. Yep. It's a new community <laughs> notice board shirt. Where you can hit it up on a, there's a link in our Instagram bio. So you can go there, buy tote bags, mugs, shirts. They're flying off the shelves, people are buying them. So that's yep, good. Yep. My mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> no, some people are buying them. Yeah, people are buying them. It's great. It's a great shirt. Uh, obviously, this comes out every Monday and the YouTube video comes out on Tuesday. Please give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and hit us up on social media. We love hearing about all your town shit. We got an all-time uh, uh, meme of uh, the Queen's death and yeah. Peter Brock the other day. Yeah, where it was Peter Brock driving the Queen to heaven. Uh, <laughs> Someone posted in some community group, which was yep. uh, very, very good. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, we love that shit. Uh, otherwise, Hing, thank you so thanks much. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, man. Yeah, so much fun. And we'll see you next week, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye.